If uh, a sailor does end up out at sea in the water for whatever reason, they can actually slap some air into the collar and then use it as a sort of flotation device to help the sailor stay afloat. My name is HM1 Andrin. I will be going over all of the different uniform items that every sailor is issued in their sea bag. A sea bag is an item that is issued to every sailor during their night of arrival um, and it stays with them throughout their Navy career. The first item in the sea bag is the Navy PT uniform. PT is physical fitness. The Navy PT uniform consists of the PT shirt as well as the blue PT shorts. So gold and blue, the Navy colors. It has silver reflective lettering for safety issues. It's 100% polyester with a very thick collar that tends to choke you while you run. They each have a pocket on each side and then on the inside they have a ID card holder. The shoes the sailors wear with PT uniforms are any shoe that is complementary to the uniform that's not too flashy, but it's an athletic style shoe. The next item is the service dress whites, which you'll notice as I take these out, they are folded inside out to keep the integrity of the main crease in the front and then especially the three creases on the back collar. They're very tight, crisp creases, which is part of the tradition of the uniform um, to have a neat appearance while you're wearing the uniform. The service dress white trousers as well are also folded inside out uh, because the creases on each side of the leg as worn, the creases go in instead of out, which is why they're folded inside out. So the male version of the service dress white trousers for males have both belt loops and two front pockets and two back pockets. Uh, the female version does not have any belt loops um, or pockets. So the service dress whites, do you wear black Oxford shoes? There's a couple other components to the service dress whites, which is the neckerchief, which gets tied underneath the collar and then in front um, into a square knot. And then also the white hat, also known more commonly as the Dixie cover. So there's actually some surprising history behind this style of cover. It was introduced while sailors were in tropical climates and then they were actually able to fold the brim down so they could dissipate any water from rain in those tropical climates. Um, as well as if it's up, um, so it could be used to collect water and then the sailors could drink from their covers um, to, to stay hydrated in those climates. Is it one size fits all? It's not one size fits all. It's sized while they're here. Then you can adjust the size as needed in the future. They do have to be replaced quite often. How do you keep that uniform so white? Uh, very carefully. It's, uh, whenever you drink coffee, for example, you got to lean forward and hold your neckerchief and uh, you, you don't really want to sit down. Everyone's pretty afraid to sit down and, and ruin their dress white uniform uh, because it, it is very hard to keep clean. Every service member is responsible for their own upkeep, whether that's bringing it to a dry cleaner or cleaning it themselves and ironing in the creases. You get a yearly uniform allowance to replace and upkeep uniform items. I've never cleaned them myself because of the specific care that's needed when they are cleaned. So the next item is the service dress blue uniform, which again, similar to the service dress whites, is folded inside out to keep the integrity of those creases. So this is the oldest, most iconic uniform that the Navy has. Introduced in the 1800s, whereas the service dress whites were introduced around World War I. It's the same type of collar with the creases in the back, just like the whites, two stars in the white piping in the back. The service dress blue trousers have lacings in the back. Uh, the lacings, it used to have, when this uniform was first introduced, lacings all around. However, they would snap or break, uh, so they replaced them with buttons in the front. So they kept the, the laces, uh, but then they added the buttons in the front, the 13 buttons, which started off at seven buttons, and then it was told that it was uncomfortable for sailors that had to use the bathroom. The Navy made it a little bit easier to use the restroom. It's really only one button at the top. And now there's a, a hidden zipper that you can use. And then these buttons are just fake now. The next uniform that we'll talk about is the Navy working uniform type three, which is the camouflage uniform, or a lot of us call it camis. So this working uniform is the standard working uniform that most every sailor wears at a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's a ship that's in port, sub that's in port, uh, any shore duty command, 
This is a 50% cotton, 50% nylon material. Much more breathable than the former type one material, which is the, the blueberries or the blue camouflage that we used to have up till a few years ago. So a little bit easier to, to breathe, especially in the summer. It has four buttons in the front, a fifth if you are in battle dress mode uh, with a Velcro collar. So these are the Navy working uniform type three trousers. Again, it has one main button in the front and then four hidden buttons um, on a strap behind that. So it has two standard front pockets, like on most, most trousers, uh, two cargo pockets, and then two ankle pockets that are Velcro on each side, and then two more back pockets. The cover for the NW's Type 3 is the eight point cover, which has eight physical points, like a stop sign on the top, um, and then a Navy Ace on the front. The hardest part about this cover is to keep the integrity of those eight points and so they don't fold in on themselves. Um, so it looks pointy and sharp as you wear it. What some sailors do is they'll actually put cardboard or a plastic insert into the cover to keep, to help hold the integrity of those eight points and make it look crisp. The footwear is for shipboard is generally the black leather boots. So the next uniform item is the coveralls. The set that's issued is, is really only worn in boot camp. The, the set that sailors wear out on ships is actually called the FRV or a fire resistant version of the coveralls. So this uniform is worn on ships or submarines while underway. Um, on any shipboard deployments, that's really the only spot where it's worn is on ships. So this material is mostly polyester and then some cotton in it. This material is not very breathable um, with intention. Uh, so if uh, a sailor does end up out at sea in the water for whatever reason, they can actually slap some air into the collar and then use it as a sort of flotation device to help the sailor stay afloat. The only downside to this uniform uh, for some sailors is that it's a one piece. So if you need to use the head or the bathroom, um, you need to take everything off whereas you can't just drop your trousers. The footwear is the same black boots that they would wear with their NW Type 3. The last item is the Navy service uniform. So this is not actually stowed in the sea bag. It's just hung up on a hanger. That's how we teach our recruits to stow it. So this uniform is worn at a more formal command um, as an instructor duty, as a recruit division commander, most admin jobs at shore commands, any office type job that sailors might work at. This shirt just has two breast pockets. Some sailors call it peanut butters because of the black trousers and the khaki shirt. Um, a little bit different than as an E7 or above. Um, they would also wear khaki pants with it and they would just call them service khakis. So the trousers for this, two side pockets and two back pockets, uh, very similar to the male service dress whites, again with the belt loops. Um, the females is also similar, whereas there is no belt loops and there's no pockets. And then the garrison cover, which is worn with the Navy service uniform. We call this the, the pizza slice here in boot camp. So this cover is worn uh, with that pizza slice forward, rank insignia on the left side, um, about one inch above your eyebrows, uh, squarely on your head. It feels like it's about to fall off, especially on a windy day. Um, there is some tradition, especially with Airedales or air, different air rates where um, they put a little whale tail in the back of the cover. From what I've heard from those people that wear their cover with the, uh, with the little whale tail in the back, is uh, while they used to wear these covers on the flight deck or during flight operations, um, they would wear a headset on top of their cover, which would create that crease in the back. Has it ever blown off of your head? Uh, several times. I tend to march or, or walk with my, uh, my hand holding my cover the whole time so it doesn't blow off. I'll give you my personal rankings of my opinions of these uniforms. So the least favorite would be the coveralls. Um, I'm not a shipboard sailor, I'm a greenside sailor, so I've never worn these during my jobs. My favorite would be the NW Type 3s because it's the most comfortable. It's what comes to mind when I think of the armed forces, I think of all the branches wearing their camouflage uniform. And again, it's very comfortable, very breathable. I think it's a good uniform. So that's it. That's all six uniforms that every recruit is issued during Navy boot camp. When would you use the ankle pockets? Cigarettes. I've never. Don't say that. <laughs>